Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here, and today I am joined by Zach Mayfield, who is over on FaceTime. Zach, what are we doing today? How are we doing, everybody? Today, we're talking about Adobe Premiere Pro, and we're gonna give you five ballin' tips to work on, for your, to make your workflow better, right, Connor? Absolutely, and not only are there five tips on this channel, but there are also going to be five tips on Zach's channel. So if you're interested in even more crazy, awesome, Fallen, as Zach would put it, tips, definitely go check out. All the links will be everywhere. But before we get into this video quickly, just real quickly, I'm actually going to be on a panel of judges for this film contest, short film contest called Focus on the Good. If you're interested in checking that out, it's a super cool thing. There's gonna be lots of prizes. Definitely go check out the video that is linked in the description. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the first tip. Okay, so the first thing is actually very quick, very simple, but is something that helps me out a lot, and it is called the enable key. So Premiere Pro doesn't actually have this set up automatically, so what you're going to do to get the enable key working, I like it to be on my E key, you're gonna go up to Premiere, you're going to go to Keyboard Shortcuts, and in the search bar right here, you're going to type enable, and you're going to click it and drag it and put it on your E key. Now, I already have it here, so now I have it on there twice. I don't know what that's going to do. I'm just gonna cancel that. But basically, what's really cool is now instead of deleting things and doing what I like to call a destructive edit, I don't have to worry about that anymore. So let's say I have my base layer of footage right here of me doing an ACAM, but then I also have this top layer, which is my screen recording, and I don't want to delete the screen recording, I just want it to come in and out when it's necessary. So instead, what I can do is I can make cuts, and instead of deleting it, I can just hit the E key, and now there's my face, all nice and pretty. And then when I wanna transition into the screen capture, it'll just transition into the screen capture, and I didn't delete anything, so that way if I'm like, oh, actually I want that back for some reason, I just click the E key on it again, and there it is, as if I never touched it. Wow, what a tip from our friend Connor. Let's get into tip number two. <laughs> Similar to Connor's tip, mine is also a single keyboard stroke that you can set up in your keyboard shortcuts. He already showed you how to do that. Mine is R for speed and duration. So it's very simple, but basically if you want like this clip right here to be in slow motion, you would just click on the clip, hit R, and then this was shot on a red and 120 frames per second. So 500% is full speed, so I would make this 100% to make it slow motion. So now, we got slow motion. And Command Z to undo it. R, 100, enter, and that is how you use R for speed and duration. It just makes things a little bit faster. Alrighty, so the third thing that I'm going to show you guys is how to extend the length of a song to any length at all, which is super powerful, especially when you're doing talking heads. For instance, let's say you have a talking head segment that's three minutes long, but your song's only two minutes long. Well, instead of manually cutting the song and trying to figure out, well, okay, where does this mash together and doing a little fusing, little, you know, you don't have to do any of that. I'm gonna show you a quick way to do it. Technically, I'm cheating, because this is not just in Premiere, this is also an audition, but I think you're gonna like it. So let's see, let's take this scenario, for instance. Let's say this is my talking head, which is, six minutes and 43 seconds long. Now that's pretty long, I wouldn't normally do that, but let's just say six minutes and 43 seconds is how long I want this song to be right here. Alrighty, so normally, guys, I hope you enjoy Jonathan's little bit about Da Vinci Resolve, hope you found that useful, but now let's go ahead and dive in. It's got a good vibe and I want it to be six minutes and 43 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the song. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top to the edit tab window thing, and I'm gonna come over here to edit in Adobe Edition and select clip. If you select sequence, it's gonna select the whole sequence. You wanna select clip, that's very important. So what this is going to do is it's going to load that clip up in Adobe Audition. It's going to take a couple seconds because this is Adobe. All right, so now you are here. Now, this is not useful. We actually don't wanna be in this section of Audition. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to the top left and click on multi-track. You're gonna title it something use Perfect, something useful. And you're going to hit click browse and make sure that you're saving it to wherever you want to save it. So for instance, I want this to be in the five premier tips in music, choose and okay. So now we're in a multi-track. So I'm going to drag that song that I had in Premiere. I'm going to highlight it and I'm gonna come over here in the properties tab and click on enable remix. It's going to analyze the clip. It's kind of 
kind of figuring out how the song works because songs are pretty formulaic so it can kind of figure out where the beats are and where the chorus is and the bridge and all that good stuff so here we are and then target duration i'm going to highlight this and i'm just going to type uh, six minutes and I like my songs to go a little longer usually than the talking head so I have some flexibility it was 43 seconds so let's go ahead and say 50 seconds it done processes the song boom now you have a song that is six minutes and 50 seconds long just like that and to get it back into Premiere this is super cool this is this is where Adobe kind of shines it is it is pretty awesome so what we're gonna do is export to Adobe Premiere I like to set the mix down session to a stereo file uh, and then you're going to pick where it goes again. You can name it something or not, doesn't matter, export. And it's gonna say copy to an active sequence, which is yes, and you want it to go to a new audio track. Hit okay, and there you go. You have your song now that is the entire length of the video. ...to how I grade in Premiere Pro when dealing with- Super awesome. Footage. Dude, I'm actually really excited to watch your video when it comes out so that I can learn that because that's actually super cool. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite thing about how Premiere works with Audition. When I discovered that, I, I was like, okay, I'm sold. This is now going to be my editing platform for anything. Okay, so this is another simple one coming at you, but basically, instead of using your audio keyframes to set the level of your audio, it kind of takes forever to like click on these things and drag them down and all that stuff. Here's what I do. I just use the C tool to cut. I just use the cut tool to cut right here. And then I have my crossfade set to command two. You can do that in your keyboard preferences. I just drag it out to how long I want the fade to be. And then I click on my clip, hit G for gain. And then I just set it to what I want it to be. Now you can hear the audio just slowly get quieter. Beautiful. So you can use that for vlogs or weddings, really anything if you need to do quicker audio edits. Alrighty, and to sum it up with one last tip, this one is actually an export tip. So I don't know if you guys have this frustration. I know I had this frustration and I know a couple of my friends had this frustration, but when you export your video in Premiere Pro on a Mac, it never looks the same as it did in Premiere Pro when you export it. Like the color grade is wrong and it just drove me absolutely insane. You so, know how to fix there's this? A, there's a fix. Zach, what? there is a fix. Yes, I didn't know this. It, this is Adobe's fix anyway. So Adobe actually put this out. So what they have is they have a corrective gamma LUT that you apply, but you do not apply it in the actual editor. So I'm gonna show you how to get to it. So once you have your video done and you're ready to export it, you're just gonna do exactly that. So you're gonna go over to file, export, media, very simple, just like normal. But instead of just exporting it out like you do with your normal settings, you're going to go to this little effects tab right here and you're going to check this Illumetry look slash LUT, okay? And then you're going to go down into the description of this video and download the LUT that we'll link to. This is actually provided by Adobe and this should fix, fix the issue. I wish that they would actually fix the issue internally, but this, this does work. So your videos will actually look a lot more like what they do in your editor. So I keep mine on my desktop just because that way it's always there. And it's called QT Gamma Compensation. So you're gonna click that, you're going to hit open, and you'll notice on your screen, it gets a little darker. Uh, just ignore that. It, it'll, it looks kind of funky in here. And also another bug with it, which is super goofy. Again, this was put out by Adobe. I don't know why there's so many issues. On applied, it'll say none, as if it didn't work, but it did work. So just you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. And then you export your video with your normal settings. And that should fix the weird color difference that you get when you're exporting from Premiere on a Mac. Dude, that's crazy. I Cause sometimes when I export videos, it does look a little different or like less saturated than in Premiere. That's insane, I had no idea about this. Yeah, it looks almost flatter when you export it and sometimes the colors can even be a little bit off so that fixes that weird gamma. I, get, I don't know, they call it gamma compensation. So it's something to do with the gamma when you export. I don't know, I don't know. How, how, do, how does Adobe get that wrong? I don't know. Fix your stuff, Adobe, come on. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you found that useful. Again, remember that there are five more tips over on Zach's channel, so make sure you go check out this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you got something useful out of it. Leave a like if you did. And as always, thanks for hanging. Bye.